You are the most threatening person. Between you and Paul, you're the most threatening. Like, I don't trust you because it's like, yeah, yeah, your character's pretty. Yeah, you don't trust that. Don't you do it. What do you got? You got that? Oh, that was close. You gotta lead him. Oh, you changed directions. I prefer the meat cleaver. <laughs> I'm partial to the jawbone knife. Savor this moment. <laughs> Yep. You know what I like to do to Tamara's body? Oh, not you, not you. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's what I like to do to Tamara's body. Oh, boy. Stab it, stab uh, it. Honestly, stab it, I don't stab want it now. But I'm it, dead. Stab it, stab it. Doesn't matter, you can throw me in the garbage. I don't care. <laughs> did. It won't change anything, but yeah, I did. Ah, Forever. what's it supposed to happen? I killed another player. Yeah, let's go ahead and just start fucking shit up. I just killed somebody. Where's Matt? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I texted him. See if he joins. He said he was finishing up an episode of something. No, that's in a week and a half. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, a we yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Where did oh there's that player. Alright, I killed him once. Oh you got him. Yeah, I said it. I didn't tell him both. I just said, yeah. Yeah, we were already with him. Yeah, okay. Oh, he messaged both of y'all? Yeah. Huh. Messaged me like a little baby. Uh, by the way, this, I believe, is his vehicle. Yeah, it is, I think. Because I can't kill these horses, so I'm pretty sure they're his. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Go for it. Oh! Oh, he's shooting at me, huh? Or somebody else. Yep, there's right there. Nope. I mean, if y'all want to shoot him while I'm hit punching him. See, again, you're putting value to life. Like, it doesn't matter. Kill Paul, kill me. I don't care. I'll kill myself. I don't give a shit. No, I'm okay. I'm the king of the chip and kook. We could settle this. Oh, what? Sorry, dude. Oh. Uh, I didn't mean I didn't mean to tackle you, dude. Get the hell away from me. Yeah, get some friends. Hey, there's gallows right here. I wonder if I can hang myself. That'd be great. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. It does say something here. Ah, it just lets me sit. Well, fuck that. This guy sucks. I'm gonna get him to quit, and then we'll go find somebody that's actually a challenge. We can't load all three of us into the uh, posse up, can we? What do you mean?
You know how when you go online, it's like free roam, posse up, da 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 da. I think all I have to do is make you permanent members if it works like Grand Theft Auto. I don't know if it does. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I just. Cause yeah, I, was, I think I'll make you a permanent member. Um, and then whenever I uh, reform the posse, I, say if I we think didn't... any of you can reform the posse. Okay. At that point, yeah. Because that would be uh, a surefire way to put us in with other posses. Is it? Is that what it is? A posse playlist search, or is it just joining off the bat so that you don't have to? Because it, to me, it seems like the other options where you can go to New Hanover, you can go, you can go wherever you <laughs> want. It just, it doesn't change like the game at all. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I just assumed if we were already formed as a posse and we went into it, it would put us all together against the rest of the posses. I, mean, I think it just finds a server with four slots. To be honest, I think that's all it does. Because right now, if you look at the players that are in here, this is a 24-person server right now. There are 24 people scattered around this nonsense somewhere, including us, I'm assuming. Yeah, including us. And I'm probably the lowest player in here. Yep. Paul, if I have anything to say about it, I'll make sure of it. <laughs> I'll go right. He's, a little... He's just doing what he can. I'm gonna do what I'm I gonna do. make it fair and start clubbing him with my hands. Oh my god, what a pussy, dude! <laughs> I seriously took him down barehanded, and he had a shotgun in a long hallway. Yep. He missed full shots. I zigged and I zagged, and then I choked. That's what I need. I need a shotgun. It just save up and get the repeating. No, actually, you know what I did? This is, I think, the smartest thing. <laughs> nice. Get the uh, sawed-off shotgun. Because it takes the slot of your pistol, <laughs> and you can carry, like, the varmint rifle and a bolt action, something like that, and you're pretty much good to go. I do too. I want a volcanic pistol. I don't have it yet, but I, I really one. do. Oh, I bet. I want to get that in the Mauser. I really wanted a Mauser, like a real one and a Luger, the one from World War II, because my grandfather gave me his. Um... Yeah, my grandfather was in the Coast Guard. He was a pistol marksman for the Coast Guard, and he gave me his. Um... 1942 Colt 1911A1 that he hybrided into a Colt 1911A2 and was a pistol marksman with. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's just, it's got his name etched in it. Um, property of the U.S. Army. It's got a military designation. It's. Oh, shit. That, it's gorgeous. I take it out to the range sometimes and it's just insane because you think about it, it's like that is. A, literally a almost an 80 year old pistol or like four years away from it being an 80 year old pistol and it still works perfectly I have um, I've skeet um, sh uh, what do you call it like uh, skeet skeet's shooting. left over skeet disc. yeah because I, I love skeet shooting I'm really good at it um, I have clays um, left over from that from the last time I went and I have, I have something called a Norinco Mac 90. It's an AK-47 clone made by China. Um, I have that tactical everything. I bought it when I was like 19, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I've had it for a long time. Uh, but yeah, I went out to the range about two months ago, and it was a lot of fun. Especially skeet shooting. Clark's Brothers in Warrington. The way to go. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I haven't looked at it. I think mine's only like 13 or something. It's not that bad.
I got into a really unfortunate position in St. Denis one time where my bounty was up to the, like, high 80s, which is just unheard of. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I didn't realize it, and I went to go do that uh, infinite cop grind thing because the whole point of that is that you're supposed to take a bunch of weapons with you and get all the medals so you can get gold by accomplishing all the headshots and the executions and all of that because they're just never going to stop. Anyway, so I went to go do that, realized I had an $80 bounty, and I'm just like, well, this fucking sucks. If I die, I'm basically going to have $12 left over. This sucks. Yeah, it was, it was awful. And I was just like, well, I'm stuck. I'm surprised he's lasted this long. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the mappy boy and see where we're gonna go. We are... Yeah, we should start making our way over there. Let's see if we can do a nice travel path that, uh... Maybe we can hit some places on the way that could have people. So we're gonna head to Emerald Ranch first. And then we will head... It could. Um, there's a bounty poster there. You just got to think of, like, where did somebody want to go? And there's a stables over here and a near it and then a bounty poster. So they might go there. And then we can go to Rhodes. <clears throat> oh, Valentine connected Is that a different guy or the same guy? This blue guy? Yeah, this is, there's another guy. That's that's the new guy, and he's dead now. He had a good run. Ooh, I need to get my shotgun then. Yeah, um, there was a sale of it a while ago, and I don't know. I think it was a mistake, honestly. It was free, and I bought like 25 of them. I don't think I've found anything in this game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've ever taken the time to look. Oh, I mean, I... people sometimes. No, dude. Oh, nice. I loot. I loot houses all the time. Oh, little pussy goes into passive mode. Poor guy. How much money do like I have? Like it came down with a serious case of being a pussy. Can you? Can you see? No, I guess you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to go into passive mode and then you're going to try and kill me? Listen to me, you son of a bitch. I am going to murder his ass. I see the dot. Yeah, I got my scope out now. There he is. Shit, I messed up. Damn it. Go around the right. Stabbed him with an arrow. I even know you could. I'm pretty good at sniping, but you were you seem to get a drop on me almost every single time. Um, oh, you killed my horse. Ooh. I like I like the tactile feel of killing my opponents with my hands and looking into their eyes as the light fades. There you go. I also really like carrying their bodies to the next murder. I'm I have 
have a serious case of psychosis, and you have other skills. I'm Ooh, good. There at, he is. I'm good at catching bullets for y'all. True. <laughs> I like to think that Matt and I started Psycho Sisters without ever starting anything, and then we had people that just liked the cause. We never intended. I feel like we walked into a town and stabbed a bunch of people, and two people were like, I'm into that, and just started following us. And that's the end of the story. It wasn't like we ever invited <laughs> you. It was kind of like, no, this, these people want it. Where is he? Oh, I think. Oh, we just like kind of... All right, shall we, uh, my active horses, I don't care. I'll see him. There he is. Ah, uh, see, he's all, he's all blue now. Yeah, but he's not part of the posse. He's just a big old pussy. No friends. He's to the north. He went blue. Uh, yeah. Or that, too. That, I was going to say, it's either that or he's leaving. Let's see what he does. Well, he's just staring at me. See you in hell, buddy. Alright, good. We ruined his day. Yes. Pardon me. Oh, fuck. There's somebody hiding in the casino. Yeah. The poker room upstairs. Yes. Well. No. I, I saw Shows his, him as passive. I, he was red to me. Dude, get the hell out of my way, you fucking prostitute. Excuse you. Bitch. Yeah, he's a he's a passive bitch. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, fuck him. That's just because I could. Uh, he was just right next to me. He looked at me. So, you know. That's exactly if it gets my killing juices flowing is when people look at me or breathe. <laughs> Every time I see that, it's just like, oh, God, I gotta kill. Gotta kill. <laughs> yep. Got it. Uh, so this game, um, I don't know if you've ever played. It's called The Division. Um, okay, so play The Division Two. In The Division One and Two, uh, they have this thing called proximity chat, which is amazing. It's probably the best feature of the game. Um, and just to be clear on what it is, uh, if you don't join a chat party and you're using this, depending on how far away you are from another player they can hear you talking, like, when you're actually just like this, right? And it, so there will be times where we were in a room and we would just hear things like people coming in just being, like, you know, real quiet, like, yeah, we're going to do this, all right, we're going to go over here, all right, looks like there's there's three of us, like, going to head this way, then one of us will head this way, and it's like, all right, cool, let's go kill that guy, you know? So, no. So they start talking about everything, and so we used to do these really funny things, like um, we would send Davey out, to uh, my friend David to go up the stairs in the metro and start shooting at people just randomly, just firing at random. Get them all interested, run downstairs, and then we were all just set up for like this giant, giant ambush and uh, just stuff like that, right? So anyway, one time <laughs> we had the chat active and uh, this guy, this guy was walking around and you can see if they're carrying stuff or if they're not carrying stuff. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, horse, or I'm gonna blast you. I'm trying to feed him so he shuts the fuck up, but he's He won't let it won't let me. He won't let me do anything to him. 
You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take care of this real quick. I know exactly what he needs. It won't let me kill my own horse. This is frustrating to me. There. Yeah, maybe you can. There we go. It was all grayed out. I couldn't do it. He just kept kicking. Are you sure that's your horse? Hip Hop Anonymous. Hip. Do you know what that's from? Does anybody know what that's from? Yeah, it's from fucking Big Daddy. Big this Daddy! Is, this is bullshit. He gets all the easy this ones. This is bullshit. What is this <laughs> word? Hip, hip, hop, hip Hop? Hip Hop Anonymous? <laughs> it's Hippopotamus. <laughs> hip Hop Anonymous? And then I saw somebody online in Reddit whose name was, instead of being, you know, Anon for Anonymous, it was Anonomonopia, and I just <laughs> thought that was so fucking funny, so I stole that Anonomonopia, <laughs> so I stole that. Oh yeah, so anyways, so this guy was walking around, right, by himself, me and my three friends was hanging out, we see him, puts his hands up. And he comes over to the mic and he's like, hey guys, listen, I'm not carrying anything. We all got our guns on him. I'm like, who said this was a robbery? And it's just signs like, oh, come on, man. And I, we just unloaded on him, right? So a couple days later, we're playing again. And I guess, I don't know if he friended me because I have a ton of friends that I don't even know who they are, but just people, random people. So I think he friended, yeah, I think he friended me. Oh, shit, I missed a turn. Ha, ha, ha. Um... Yeah. So I think he friended me. Um, this was just a stop on the way, and I don't think anybody's here. I was just going to see if anybody happened to be here. This is a bounty poster board in this area. All right, and a fence, actually. I'm going to stop there real quick. I'm going to... I need to buy me some bottles. So yeah, he shows up with his four friends, and comes into proximity and I can hear him we're in this room looting and, he, and I can hear him saying like I think they're right over here I think they're in this house and I just kind of like like oh shit what do we get so I we can't say anything so Davey Matt and I are just silent like we're not saying a word and we're all just looking at each other in the game and we all just take positions and we all know what we're gonna do and the second they open that door I like run forward with a shotgun and just start shooting Davey starts unloading with a rifle and I think Matt starts sniping him and it was it was just like this beautiful synchrony of of murder um, all unspoken beautiful I am so broke thirty dollars right now Wow. <laughs> Lance knife? Oh, I see it. Why don't you show me what it looks like? Oh, boy. What? Dude, I've had so many bullshit things happen that have cost me a lot, and I've never said it. No! No! Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, ooh. Stab me. I want to see what it feels like. Yeah, I'm uh, doing drugs, as they, as the kids say, all the cool kids. Looks like this, the head of a, a spear. Stab me. 
Stop me! Why won't you stab me? <laughs> don't you do it, Paul. I I'm don't just, want to be tied up. I'm just practicing. You're just, just practicing. Oh, you just practicing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me show you what I practice sometimes. <laughs> I need to get a better lasso. I want to get that improved one. I need it. I got tied up by one of those. It is awful. It is awful trying to break out of that thing. It takes forever. And then aren't they expensive? Yeah, dude. That's the part that pisses me off about this. Yeah, it's yeah. like two, three hundred. <laughs> I have it. We know, Katie. You have <laughs> everything. Some of us are just trying to get by, okay? <laughs> really, Katie? Oh my god. Fucking Jeff Bezos over here telling us not to worry. <laughs> Paying no taxes while we're suffering, alright? Kill you because you're rich, I won't hate you because of it. <laughs> Are you gonna do it as I'm tied up? It should be. Yeah, it is on. What am I doing? I, I don't know what my character... Oh, okay. That's not the button I hit. Oh, well. Shit. I, I, I didn't mean to... I can't. That's weird. It won't let me stab you. Yeah, it won't let okay, me stab let me... you. Let me see if I... Yeah. This is Sparta. Ah, that's probably what I was experiencing the other day. I remember I kept saying I couldn't punch anybody. It was really pissing me off. Well, I don't know. Let me see if I can... Uh, who is going to be Tribune? One second. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Work in the field. Well, that worked. You wallowed around in the mud, lady. <laughs> yeah, it works everywhere else. No witnesses. Oh, great. Well, after I stab this guy, there's going to be a ton of witnesses. We're making our way there. We can go south to Rhodes and then east to uh, St. Denis. Oh, you want to fight? Okay. Let's go, bitch. I know I got a roller here. Ooh. Ouch. We haven't been reported yet. We just have witnesses. Yeah, I killed a lot of people to make that happen. This will be my last victim. Hi! Oh! oh. Ooh, awful. When did I get a pelt? Okay. <clears throat> I don't think Matt's gonna join us, so I guess Matt and I aren't friends anymore. Again. Alright, well, means it's time to get off the horse.
you son of a bitch. How dare you cut me off? Ooh, a hat. Alright, uh, to south. What a way to go. I think. And the dishonor. I didn't even I didn't even have honor in the beginning. Every well, time I do something nice, I try and do three bad things to offset whatever I did. You know, I feel like everybody has to have their backstory. Like, what kind of backstory could a character like mine have to get to this point in her, assuming by her looks, her 50s, maybe, when she decides to just go postal? What is wrong with this deer? No. Have the what? Mm -mm. Now, I just got the bag. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. I'm gonna run to the gun store real quick and get all my weapons taken care of real quick. Actually, I'm gonna do it here. Welcome. How do you do? I said, I am so glad I do not have to open tomorrow. Hey, why don't you rub it in? Ah, yeah, I'm going to rub it in for a minute, because I've been working Sunday opens for a year and a half, and I'm done, man. I am done. I do not want to work brunch anymore. A, I hate working brunch. B, Dan drives me crazy. And C, I... Oh, my <laughs> God, dude. Dan's an Dan ang is angry person. Dan is a very angry and bitter fucking human being. Like, he really is, and he takes it out on the people around him, and it's really frustrating and annoying because he's not a bad guy, but he, he is an angry human being. Um, because he's not happy in his job, and he has anxiety issues. He has a lot of issues. Um, so for the first year that I worked with Dan as a bartender, um, I was basically asked by Joey to work the shifts that Dan works on the weekend to make sure that things like him forgetting to ring in a table's order and guests walking out because nobody's greeted them because he's busy talking to somebody for 30 minutes, like things like that. It was my job to make sure those things didn't happen. And I was a new bartender at Harry's. I was like, whatever, let's do it. I did it for a while. I ended up doing everything. I mean, I'm not saying that Dan's a bad bartender. He's not a volume bartender. He He's not a volume... Yes, he needs to be in a very small bar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And 
Dan's not happy in his job, and because of that, and it's not the job, it's just he's not happy where he is. He's been talking for two years now about leaving and pursuing his computer stuff and all that, and it's like, cool, do it, man. He hasn't done it, whatever. I mean, I'm just, he's he's a very frustrating individual to deal with sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um like I said, I mean, I've I've had my own personal issues with not personal outside of work, but issues with work at with Dan at work and I've made it pretty clear and he has he has some stuff to deal with and and that's fine. Uh he gets really angry <clears throat> that like I go behind the bar to help servers like pour drink or to help pour drinks for servers and stuff like that and he's he's made an opinion about that several times whereas connie brian and katie love the fact that i come back and help them do dishes and pour drinks when they're a little busy and just help them in general because i mean it's still my customers like cocktail and bar are pretty much the same in a lot of ways like i have a lot of customers there that know me personally and i want to take care of them um and you know dan sees it as me like stepping on his toes or whatever and it, it's fine. Like, I get it, but it's ridiculous. Like, it's time to grow up. Put your pride away. Like, that's not what this is about. Like, I'm just here to make your life easier. I'm not trying to make it harder. And that's, I think, where we have the big disagreement. But mm -hmm. It's not uh, let me brain say this. surgery. It's not. It's not. Yes. And unfortunately, it, that's I, I'm with you. And, you know, it's it's kind of like we said, meat and potatoes, right? It's like you have a recipe, and this is something like Gordon Ramsay talks about, right? He, he always says the first test that he gives his new chefs is to make New England clam chowder because it's seven ingredients. And watch how many new chefs will run out and grab 30 or 40 different ingredients to make this insane. And that's not what he's looking for. He's like, a tomato should taste like a tomato, right? When you've got the basics down, then start getting creative. Then start adding the stuff. I see a lot of people, like the Nates and the Dans, where it's like, you're doing the extra stuff, but you're not doing the basic stuff, like restocking and making sure your menus are up to date and making sure all your guests have full glasses. These are things that are more important than you being able to sell a guy a $30 bottle. Because guess what? For every $30 bottle you just sold, four customers are just furious with you. So, yeah, and that's not worth it. Meat and he, potatoes. He was flipping out about the menus Friday. He always does. Dude, do you remember Sunday morning when we came in? And uh, the menus weren't up to date, and we didn't really know what was going on, and there was a little bit of confusion, and Dan just started laying into the idea that Dylan should have done the menus, which he should have. Fair. He should have. I mean, I know that, but it's like, Dan, dude, you're, why are you so angry? Like, yeah. it's like I'm sitting there changing the menus, and he's like, this is ridiculous. This is no communication. This is what I've always talked about. We have no communication. I'm like, dude, calm down. Like, well, the, it's the, Trevor and Paul and Dylan. Like, they're people. Let's help them. Like, why are you making this an issue? What, do you want to call Doug and Joey over this? Calm down. That's what he was freaking out about Friday. I came in, and there was a note that said, if Dylan doesn't have the menus in by 10, call Trevor. Trevor will have it done. Da-da-da-da-da. Dan asked about the menus, and I told him exactly that. And then he goes off on his rant about, no communication, and I and yes. I just oh I looked God, at him. I, I looked at him. And I was like, "Are you fucking with me?" Because I'm communicating with you right at this very minute, telling you they're in the process of being done. As soon as they're sent over, I'm gonna print them, and we're gonna change them out. It's... Nobody communicates, and I'm like, Dan, <laughs> I am telling you right now what is going on. <laughs> I know, right? I it's... can't I can't run into the bathroom and just shit these menus out. I can't print Guys, them until they're emailed to me. <laughs> let me tell you the funniest story 
I can about this. And this is genuinely a story that makes me laugh constantly, but this sums it up perfectly. I had to sit down with Joey over this because it was just a moment where I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Dan and I are working on a Sunday morning back when brunches were actually a thing. And um, it was busy. It was very busy. And we used to take half a cocktail and all the bar, all the cocktail drinks that come in, all that shit. Um, so I would be in cocktail. And anyway, it doesn't matter. We were very, very busy. And I am getting my ass kicked. Like, cocktail slammed. I come over to pour a beer, 21 and 22, so the very end of the bar by the first tap handle. They look at me with their hands up in the air like, what the fuck? And I come over, and I'm like, hey, guys, what's going on? And they're like, we have been sitting here for at least 10 minutes. He's like, and I'm not kidding, like 10 minutes. And he pulls out his phone, and it's a text to his friend that says, just got here. And it was 10 minutes ago, and he's like, nobody has talked to us. Nobody has gotten us a drink. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, guys, I'm sure that uh, I have another bartender here. I'm sure that he's just talking to a new guest. Like, let me take care of this. What can I get you to drink? And he's like, he leans over and he looks. He's like, that's your other bartender? And he points. And this is what he, this is what I see. I lean around the center island. Oh, man. Okay, Dan has a, like, a, a Lexan pan, like, a, or Lexan thing that we put, like, celery and he's got two straws over it. And then he has a, a rocks glass, a tall rocks glass, balancing on the two straws. And then a straw over that. And he's balancing, like, two shot glasses on it with, like, water in one of them. And he's trying to explain to the customer to see if he can take one of them off without the other one spilling. And I'm looking around, and there are customers with no menus. There are customers with no drinks. And he's doing a fucking magic trick. And I just start laughing. I just start laughing so hard. And this customer looks at me and he goes, are you laughing at me? And I'm like, dude, I am so sorry. But honestly, put yourself in my position. Okay, I'm, I'm working that whole section over there. I'm rushing. I'm trying to make everything right. I see you're upset. And I turn to see why my friend isn't helping me. And that's what I see. Like, that is not what I expected to see. He starts laughing. And he's like, okay, I get it. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Customer next to him goes, hey, are we ever going to get our appetizer? Their entrees get delivered. I'm like, probably not, to be perfectly honest with you. And they're just like, gotcha. And I'm like, look, I'm going to take care of this. I'll be right back. It's it's been a nightmare he is the reason i got out of bartending 100 percent, 100 percent. i don't want to deal with the bullshit anymore yep so much drama no thank you <laughs> like not it nope mm -mm. i don't want it anymore i'm tired of getting bitchy text messages i'm tired of Group messages where everyone's flipping out at each other and calling each other out for not doing their job. One of my favorite moments is when um, we had a bar meeting and Doug... Okay, before the meeting, I was like, guys, let's unite on this, okay? This is a bar meeting. They're going to say a bunch of stuff that we're not going to want to hear, okay? But we need to listen, understand, and move on. I'm not saying you have to agree with what they say. I'm just saying let's not argue with them this time, okay? Not like the other times. Let's just... Let it happen so that we're not here for an hour and 45 minutes instead of 30 minutes. And everyone's like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, let's do that. I'm like, all right, great, awesome, perfect. <laughs> Doug starts by going, all right, before we talk, we wanted to know, in front of the managers, you have me and Trevor's ears now, or like you have my ear right now, Trevor wants their ears, like, we have my ear right now, tell me, is there anything that you guys want to talk about in terms of each other or anything like that? Oh. I looked around and saw four people's eyes dilate and then immediately look around and start pointing fingers and I was like oh my god it was a bloodbath I did not say a word so the one problem with bartenders is ego it's the, it's the biggest problem with bartenders they're all drama queens not every bartender but a lot of bartenders are drama queens they have a very strong ego which you gotta think like if you take some of the strongest servers they have a very strong personality that's the big thing about serving gotta have a personality sometimes big personalities do not get along with each other and that's really what it is you are literally confined into a circle and it's not that big of a circle with another person and maybe two other people maybe three other people that has just as big an ego, just as big of a personality as you do. 
and problems happen because of that. And that's that's the core of everything. I mean, that's really what it is more than anything. Like, you can say that one person's aggressive, one person's abrasive, one person's rude. It doesn't matter. It's that they all think that they deserve better. They all think that they're better than they are. And they're unwilling to hear criticisms from another person because it's always a competition. Like, Katie's one of the most competitive people you'll ever see. Like, 100%. She's so competitive as a bartender. Every time she speaks in a bartender meeting, it's the funniest thing. She'll say something like, she's like, I want to talk about changing menus. So I always change the menus. And when I do it, this is how I do it. And I thought it would be a good idea to tell you so that you guys can do it too. That is literally every Katie statement summed up. And it's like, then you have Dan who does some his thing. Then you have Connie and Brian who do their thing. Kate Bruder did her thing. Everybody's like it. I do my own thing, I'm sure. Like, it's... It's what it is, but I just didn't want to be a part of that anymore. I like being a server because I have my section, and I don't have to, like, share it with anybody. I can just deal with my tables the way I want to deal with them. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's work ethic. Yeah. That's... restaurants are always full of drama, right? I mean, it's just what it is. It, it's always what it is. And... Yeah. And you know what I realized? That perspective right there, what you just did, that, like, what is going on, guys, come on, be real, like, that kind of thing, causes drama in itself. And that's when I was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. <laughs> like, I really don't, like... So... I, I, I don't leave the bar saying that, like, it was a bad experience. Or it was a great experience, loved it. Um, that's why I'm still pick-up bartender, all that. There's just something. I worked in Fire and Rescue for the last seven years. There's just a level of professionalism that I prefer, and I wasn't seeing it, and it's okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's a very specific role that Doug could play that would be very beneficial. Like, when Doug is helpful, Doug is extremely helpful. And when, when you know, when he gets something in his mind that's the right answer, he's fantastic. Like, I, I really do respect Doug and like Doug and stuff like that. He's a pain in the ass to deal with, though. I mean, I'm sorry. He's a pain in the ass to deal with. He is so wishy-washy. He has an idea. Joey jumps in and says no. I, I, I'm not I'm not trying to make this awkward for you, Paul. Like, I forgive me. Like, you know, I, I, I don't want to make this awkward, but... But that's just my opinion. You know, I'm sure you have yours, and I'm not trying to put you in a position where you're hearing a bunch of shit. <laughs> you know, so sorry. Well, yeah, and I mean, you two are the only two I talk to outside of work. Yeah. So it's not like I'm going to run back in and be like, oh, hey, guess no, what we talked about last night? And it's not going to, I mean, everybody has their opinion on things. So I'll tell you two something, too, that is interesting. And I think you're saying, I have always kind of been the person that's kind of weird at Harry's, where, like, RB used to make me close the door, and he would just tell me things that he should not have been telling me. <laughs> like, that is for sure. Like, I've always been like that. And that's fine. Like, I like that. So a lot of times in this really precarious situation where I've got to kind of decide, by the way, I'm just roaming this area looking for players on the radar, oh. just so you know, and doing this. Yeah, that's I'm also doing that. Um, but I've also ended up in awkward situations where, like, 
I know something that somebody who confides in me told me something that I feel like management really needs to know and I need to balance that decision. Um, you know, make sure that I'm not betraying someone's trust or anything like that. So it gets a little tricky. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, like Brandon asked me, uh, what are Tamer and Trevor talking about? When you and Trevor were sitting down <laughs> yesterday, I was like, uh, don't know. That's Tamer and Trevor <laughs> sitting over there talking. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> and you know what's funny? That's the other thing, too. Like, um, I know things because of the context, whereas Brandon, unfortunately, Brandon ends up being kind of the out-of-the-loop manager, and it's really not his fault, but it's not not his fault either. It's it's kind of hard to... It's oh, been three years. It's, he's, it's hard to explain it. <laughs> he's a little abrasive with people, and yes. I, I think people have a problem coming to him to talk to him about things. That's why because he, he doesn't pulls know power anything. moves on people for no reason at right. all. Like it's so ridiculous. But Right. No, there was, and, and he's done that. So, Matt and I have this running joke. I wish he was here so he could tell you about this. Every single time that I have come into Harry's, when I am not on the clock, it has been some issue, and it is absolutely ridiculous. Like, I, I do not come into Harry's off the clock. I won't bring my friends in there, because any time I come in there, it's a problem. So I came in to do two things. One, I helped Trevor with a beer class. He wanted help. He needed help because he was so stressed out, and I was like, dude, let me help you. I helped him with a beer class. I come in, and nowhere, no, I, was, I wasn't allowed to be anywhere while I waited 10 minutes for Trevor to get ready. I wasn't allowed to be in the 900s. I wasn't allowed to be in the back. I wasn't allowed to be hanging near the bar. I wasn't allowed to be at the front. I wasn't allowed to sit at a table. And it's like, every time I sit somewhere, Brandon would come up and tell me to be somewhere. I was like, dude, you can't do this. And I'm like, what do you want from me, man? I'm coming here off the clock to help with something. The worst, though, was when I came in to do the CPR class. After Matt and what happened with Matt, I put on a CPR class for free. And I came in after hours and I put on a CPR class to help everybody understand what to do in those situations. And I'm coming in with my stuff, and Brandon is essentially essentially telling me that I can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. Like, look, I've already cleared this with Doug and Joey, okay? Like, if you want to talk to them, go ahead. Like, he's like, you're not allowed to be here. And I'm like, yes, I am. And he's like, no, you can't sit here. You're causing a distraction. And I'm like, I'm not causing – oh, my God. I, I won't even go. It it's – Yeah, I mean, he was he was flatlined and absolutely no respirations. No heartbeat, no respirations. Two sets of compressions. He had a heartbeat. Three or, no, four sets of rescue breaths. He was breathing again. And then, unfortunately, a week later, he throws his life away. I, I'm sorry, but that's exactly what he did. Mm. It's, it's sad. So he had gotten his... Okay, so he... Oh, so when I... Let me, let me just start from the kind of the beginning. So... I was supposed to be off. They decided to keep me an hour and a half later because it was...